and Reed to say that was a fun game to watch. You think so? Yes. All right. Well, we'll be exciting to see if, uh, if they can keep Seattle's number down. The, they, they've been giving up a ton of goals lately. All right. Let's welcome in uh, Allison Lucan, uh, NHL analyst for Root Sports, uh, covering the Seattle uh, Kraken. Uh, Allison, thanks for joining us. <laughs> thanks for having me. I feel like I'm stepping into a big time debate here. I don't know. <laughs> well, you're 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 perfect because you'll you'll settle it for us. Um, just in terms of style of play, let's start first with the Seattle Kraken and what they've been able to accomplish or not accomplish up until this point with style of play. How do you see their expansion season? Yeah, they were very honest with what this what they were going to be on the ice even at the start of the season, which was uh, the intention was strong goaltending bolstered by strong play in front on the defensive end of the ice and low scoring games. <laughs> so a narrow goal margin is something Seattle was certainly expecting mm-hmm. as opposed to to what you need in, in the late run games like you were just talking about. But, um, you know, that was their design. If you look at their play, it, it actually offensively, they've overproduced um, a little bit compared to what was expected of them. There's just been a little bit of time that's been necessary to get that synergy and that flow with the defenders in front of the goaltenders, the goaltenders reading the way that these defenders are playing, defenders staying locked into their systems. And, you know, this is Ron Francis will be the first to say this is not an excuse, but, you know, some key injuries, some some big COVID battles disrupted a team that had to really challenge to build chemistry among all of their players in an inaugural season. And I think that matters. And so I think that uh, they're coming together as the season progresses, but obviously they haven't been able to come together enough um, to contend for a postseason berth this year. Yeah. Uh, Allison, we appreciate you, you joining us. One of the, uh, the things I wanted to get your take on here being a Toronto Maple Leaf show, Jared McCann is of great interest and we got perfect timing today <laughs> that he just signed his extension. Uh, tell us about his tenure so far as a member of the Seattle Kraken and uh, expectations going forward. Yeah, I think Jared McCann is a great example of those kind of stories you look for. When you mm-hmm. have an expansion team, you know, this is a guy who who bounces around a little bit. You know, he had, what was it, 72 hours as a Maple Leaf? Right. Um, and then comes to comes to Seattle, and I think it was, it was the kind of situation where a player is put in exactly the right spot to succeed. He started off on the first line center because Yanni Gord was out with a shoulder injury, and he's playing with Eberle and uh, Schwartz, And those two guys are such quality veterans and such strong support players as well as producers in their own right that I think they really helped McCann settle into his game. And and the biggest strength he has is his finishing ability. I mean, he's a quiet guy. He's he's not going to draw your attention on the ice until he takes that shot and it gets past the opposing goaltender. Um, And part of that quietness, I think, is what leads to the fact that he is the best um, drawer of penalties on this Kraken squad, too. The best penalty margin on the roster. I think he's top 15 in the league going into tonight's game. So um, he's helping his team by scoring, and he's helping his team get opportunities to score even when he's not on the ice. So, Allison, when we when we hear about McCann signing, we now consider him a, a core guy or a guy that Ron Francis wants to build around uh, in the next few years. But I also look at the lineup, and I see a lot of 29 and 30 and 31-year-olds, and I'm starting to wonder, okay, who who are the core guys for the next few years on Seattle? Because there's a trade deadline coming and everybody's looking for, for, for help, and they're probably calling Ron Francis right now. So, I mean, who's in, who's out, um, in, in your opinion? It, Yanni Gord, to me, has a, been a great soldier for Tampa Bay. I'm not sure if Tampa would give him up or uh, if Seattle would give him up, but I, I guess anybody's for sale right now on this team if the price is right. Yeah, I mean, I I think for sure, and I think a player, uh, I do agree that anyone, if the the price is right, if if you get, you know, if you look some of these trades go down at deadline time, we've all seen them, you have to take those offers. Uh, You know, you look back at the Savard deal, the Polino deal last year, but um, 
I think Gord would be someone they'd have to take real pause on separating with. I think there's a very traditional approach going on here where obviously the unrestricted free agents are going to be the ones most marketed. Um, And Ron Francis did have a conversation with Mark Giordano before expressing that he would be available as well. But, you know, again, this team isn't even fully complete in terms of its developmental pipeline. They need to stock up their AHL roster. They need to look at draft picks and players that are the next wave to your point if we look at the average age of this roster so you know that's the mark of success is having waves of talent not just every once in a while a blip so i think that the doors are open ron francis's phone is available to be called and as long as the value is there he's willing to listen and he's willing to weaponize his cap space as well if that helps get the right deal done yeah, and we would look at this team, and, you know, Nick's talking about who's a part of the core and who isn't. I think a lot of the people who signed as, or players who signed as UFAs um, in, you know, last summer would be considered that. It's Alexiak, and, you know, they got Larson in there and signed uh, Grubauer. Some of those signings, not sure how they've panned out. How would you grade their initial uh, longer-term contracts? Yeah, you know, I think that um, the Grubauer signing, everyone's looking at that right now, obviously because of what people have seen in that this season across the board. And I think there's going to be a, a look to that contract as he ages, as there would be with any goaltender in that aging system. But right. I do think that the numbers and the measures for Grubauer this year aren't necessarily reflective of, of what he still can be. Um, I think he probably does have at least one or two seasons in him but then after that you know you you, but but these are deals that happen across the market all the time I think that um, Larson Oleksiak that's the kind of defense they want that on their back end in support of some more aggressive players I think of someone like Vince Dunn who has that more offensive upside so I think that these are good foundational deals and what happens now is finding the right pieces to go around some of those foundational deals Yanni Gord as well um, to really then make this team what the vision is for Ron Francis and his front office. One name that maybe the Leaf fans should keep an eye on is uh, Yarn Kroc. Uh, the sense is that uh, Ron's getting a lot of calls on him. I think he's a pending free agent. And there is a history with Kyle Dubas who once uh, represented him as, a, as an agent. Yes. Yep, yep. Yep, and he's, you know, he came to Seattle most kind of praised for his two-way play, which again fit the vision that Ron and and his group had for this team. Um, But he, you know, he started off quiet offensively, um, but then he's really kind of had a burst here of late. Um, He's played in pretty much, you know, power play and five and in the fives. And if he can rediscover the real strength of his defensive game, it certainly hasn't fallen away, but bringing that back as well, this is, this is one of those, that last key piece, right? Like I think of even like a Gus Nyquist type situation of someone who can come in and just kind of put all the final pieces together, be a glue guy, pop in where needed. Um, He could be someone where if that's what a team wants, they'd be looking at him. Allison, you do a, a lot of work in analytics. People can check out some um, uh, some of your work at NHL.com. Uh, I've really enjoyed following along with the, the Kraken so far this season. Is is there anything in the numbers? So we, we haven't had the, the Kraken in town here in Toronto yet this season. Uh, for people to watch for that the numbers point you towards, whether good or bad, any sort of unique identifiers to say, uh, this is something that, that the Kraken do that you won't see everywhere? Yeah, you know, I think that the Kraken represent a trend that uh, many teams are going towards, which is allowing shot volume, but having it come from the perimeter. So shot quality isn't as intense for their goaltenders. And on the flip side, you know, something that they have really striven to reduce this year because it's been an Achilles heel is chances off the rush. That's been something that they've really had to work at minimizing because that's been just a weak spot for, for this team. So if there's a lot of rush chances against, I think that would be something for Seattle to be concerned about. Uh, as far as the goal, uh, the coaching, uh, a lot of names were speculated on who is going to be named uh, the head coach. Uh, Hackstall, of course, uh, ended up with the, the job. Uh, so far, your assessment of him and the relationship he's had with the players and uh, whether or not uh, this thing has a chance to kind of stay long-term. 
Yeah, you know, I think any first year is difficult for sure. And, you know, he's done a really nice job of keeping an even tone, particularly, you know, this group was one of the teams that had a COVID outbreak right even before their inaugural game. Um, and so that tone and that calmness, I think, is important. Um, he's been very protective of his group as well, which I think is important when they were trying to find their identity. I think he, too, like this team, is, is still working to find the pieces that fit together um, to optimize the systems he may want to put in place. He recently, with his staff, changed the way this penalty kill is playing, putting them onto a more aggressive style. You know, we see what Mitch Marner can do on the penalty kill. Even it's something like that, bringing a little bit more offensive mind or, off, or offensive challenge, even when playing a man down. So I think he's trying to ramp up the way this team plays, trying to continue to add tools to the toolbox. Um, but it's a work in progress for him, just as the roster is for Ron and his group. Yeah. Uh, with, with Seattle being a team that maybe sellers, you know, everyone in this market,